right, today we're continuing with our big idea of data um, and that collecting, displaying, and analyzing data can help us to solve problems and understand the real world. Specifically today we're working on constructing and analyzing a double bar graph, more the constructing part today, the drawing of them. Alright, so here we have a grade 5 class who sells, sorry, sells snacks at morning and afternoon recess. This table shows us one day sale, so snack sales might be more specific to say snack sales on and such and such a date. So the different types of snacks, how much um, money they raise from each. Alright, so he's going to draw a double bar graph to uh, demonstrate this data. First he drew and labeled the two axes, so in the bottom he's got snack, and then he's got fruit, cereal bars, popcorn, and pretzels. On the side he has sales in money. Good to make sure that it's dollars here we can see, so it's good to know uh, what unit it is that you're using to measure. Um, if it's dollars, cents, if it's a measurement, if it's centimeters, meters, kilometers, etc. Uh, they've decided to number by twos. We can see that the largest data um, is up to 30, so we have to go at least up to 30. So uh, numbering, oh I'm sorry, they've numbered by fours. So numbering by fours is, is quite appropriate. Could also number by twos um, or even by fives. But remember when you're numbering on the side here, it has to be by even intervals and you have to start at zero. So starting at zero, um, and in this case counting by fours is, is perfect. You could start at zero, count by twos, but you cannot change how you're counting in the middle of, of the side. It has to be by the same um, scale or interval each time, counting by twos all the way, counting by fours all the way, etc. So he's going to draw two bars for each snack in the table. One is going to be for morning and one is going to be for afternoon. Uh, morning bar is going to be red, afternoon bar is going to be green. He's going to draw a legend to show each color of the bars. And of course he's going to need a title. And here's our graph, or the graph he drew. Um, he has a title, oops, sorry. He has a title, Snack Sales. He has his legend, as we said, morning and afternoon. He has two bars for each piece of data. Um, and we can make a number of conclusions from this uh, bar graph. The fruit sales were a little higher in the morning than in the afternoon. Cereal bar, cereal bar sales were higher in the morning as well. Twice as much popcorn in the afternoon and pretzels were the same at both recesses. Uh, you could also talk about what was the most popular. Well, most popular was um, cereal bars in the morning, but overall it appears fruit was the most popular. Um, and we could be more specific and take a look at the amounts at each column and um, tell the difference. Right, a couple reminders since you are drawing your graphs today. Very important things to consider when drawing graphs. The title should be very specific, as specific as you can. It makes sure that the reader of the graph knows exactly what the graph is about. You need axis titles. One title on each side is necessary. If possible, if you know the units, include them. If it's dollars or degrees or meters or centimeters or whatever. When you're numbering, make sure to number the lines, not the spaces. Make sure you're numbering at regular intervals by fives, twos, ones, threes, whatever. Um, but then you're going zero, three, six, nine, etc. And you're making sure that you're numbering the lines, not the spaces. Always, always have to start at zero. Uh, note that the numbering is also called the scale, so get used to that term. When you're numbering, you cannot jump. You have to go through regular intervals. So if your numbers don't start till 20, uh, then you'd have to number till 20 and keep going. Also note that you do not have to have the same number for the same scale for both the x and the y axis for both this side and this side. If you wanted to, you could count by ones over here and you could count by threes over here. That's just fine. You do need to include a legend um, telling the color or the pattern for the different sets of data. And all graphs must always be drawn or gra on graph paper. Otherwise, it's just too hard to tell what's going on with that graph when you're looking at a space instead of a line. Without those lines here, it's very hard to tell is this, um, how high is this bar? 
uh, without that that line so make sure that you have been using um, lined grid paper not just lined paper but grid paper and that you're numbering at regular intervals all right to practice we're going to actually look at two drawn graphs um, and see what we can tell from this information why don't you press pause and take a moment and discuss which one do you think is easier to read and how does the scale or the numbering affect how it's read all right well let's take a look weekly television viewing habits we've got fairly specific titles um, for both we have no title down here so they're missing a title down here it looks like this is Alberta Saskatchewan uh, Quebec probably this is uh, Newfoundland so down here a good title would be provinces so we should have a title there they do have a title here number of hours number of hours um, should also of course have this title here uh, here they've numbered by tens and here they've numbered by fives how do you think that affects your ability to read the data from the graph? Well, personally, I find this much easier to read with the bars more spread out, um, actually more specific. I can more easily tell that between 10 and 15, it's going to be probably around 13. Um, between 5 and 10, when it's really close to 10, it's probably going to be about 9. Much easier to determine that rather than, rather than looking at between 10 and 12, whereabouts is this? Well, or sorry, between 10 and 20, whereabouts is this? Probably around 12 is my guess, but it's harder to tell with this graph. So if you can make your numbering or your scale more specific, that, in my opinion, is always better. Uh, much easier to tell the information on the graph when it's more specific. All right, now it's your turn to do some drawing of double bar graphs. Uh, page 268, 269, numbers 1, 2, 4, and 5. Remember when you're drawing your double bar graphs, you need titles, um, all three titles, the top, the two sides. You need to watch your scale or your numbering. has to be by regular intervals. Uh, make sure you're numbering the lines. Make sure you're using graph paper. Um, remember, of course, if you have questions at all along the way, that you ask.